this one's gonna be fun. So this is a really, really cheap cooler. This comes from AliExpress. This is for that Xeon uh, E5 2420 V2 build I just did. It was under $300 featured an RX 480 4GB card, uh, that 6 core 12 thread Xeon. It had an SSD, a hard drive, and it had 16 gigabytes of DDR3. And part of that whole build was getting a really cheap cooler. This one comes in at $12.19 as of the recording of this, though there is another one on AliExpress right now that's the exact same design, just does not have the, uh, the LED fan on it. And it looks like it's $8.29 shipped to your door. So the problem right now with that Xeon build and the E5 2420 V2 is actually the motherboard with its temperature reporting being a little bit Eh, it, it seems a little bit hit or miss uh, in IDA64 and other hardware monitoring softwares. So to test this cooler, I'm actually gonna throw it on my test bench, my i7-4770K overclocked and see if this thing can hold its own or at least keep the i7 reasonably cool on that test bench. I would say hold its own, but frankly, it's a $12 cooler with two heat pipes. It's, uh, it's not gonna hold its own, but we're gonna see how well it does perform hopefully nothing explodes or melts down or dies. Now what does have me a little bit astounded right now is that we've been running this stress test for oh about two minutes and while temperatures are definitely on the high side this is an overclocked 4770k 1.35 volts running at 4.5 gigahertz it's going on an e5 xeon that's running at something like 2.2 gigahertz or a boost clock i think of 2.5 gigahertz so even though this thing is running really hot right now in this stress test with this i7 the good news is I have no doubt it can handle that E5 right now. Now, to be fair here too, I am not testing with the thermal grease that was included with this uh, particular cooler because I have a bunch of really nice Arctic uh, MX4 laying around. Uh, so I might pop this cooler back off and see what it does with, uh, with this thermal grease on it to see if it's completely garbage and... Uh, if it thermal throttles or not. And it no surprise to anyone after I switched over to the uh, the thermal paste that this, uh, this cooler came with, we do see some thermal throttling there. Now, if you are using this cooler and you're using it on a lower powered chip, then I wouldn't really be too concerned about that. However, just be aware that uh, if you do overclock a 4770K to uh, 4.5 gigahertz, it's not gonna be able to handle that. And now just for kicks, I went ahead and put the 4770K back to stock. And as you can see here, uh, we aren't having any sort of issues whatsoever handling the CPU at stock frequency and stock voltages. We're seeing temperatures in the mid 60s. Now it is worth knowing the 4770K here does have liquid metal on it. So those temperatures would be a little bit higher if it was just a stock Tim under that IHS, probably in the mid to upper 70s, but would still be likely handled without a major issue at all from this $12.19 cooler uh, with the included admittedly crummy thermal paste as well. So it is the next day and uh, I guess I might as well go ahead and give you some conclusions. This uh, cooler is now in its final resting place or its final system that hopefully it powers for at least a couple of years to come. Hopefully uh, somebody picks it up that's planning on using it for a while because this uh, system is getting sold. But uh, yeah, this cooler actually fared pretty well. I'm actually really surprised that it could handle a 4770K with good thermal paste, obviously with the included stuff, uh, an overclocked 4770K, even though it's delitted, was still too much for it. But with the MX4, we weren't getting any thermal throttling on the open test bench. Now in a case, it's likely we would get a little bit because we were coming very close to that throttling point but for any other CPU that you're not really pushing to the limits, I really don't see a problem with picking up one of these very cheap coolers and slapping it into a system because honestly, it doesn't even look overly bad. Now, I think the Unicorn Barf uh, RGB lights could go and I would prefer something either solid color or if it's gonna be RGB, at least, you know, 
make some sort of remote control, but obviously that sort of uh, increases the price of it. So for $12.19, I actually couldn't be much happier with this particular cooler because really what I was looking for was something to replace the included cooler which because I was buying this CPU secondhand was not included in the system. So I guess the conclusion here is if you're just looking for a simple cooler to replace a cooler that you either don't have or one that is going bad on you, that's just the included cooler. One of these uh, $12 uh, 19 cent tower coolers from AliExpress is a great way to get it done. Just be aware if you get one of these from AliExpress and you're in the United States where I am, this is gonna take a little bit of time to get to you. I think it took about three or four weeks to get to my door, though at least shipping was free. So I do wanna hear from you guys. Have you used cheap coolers in the past, including ones like this? If you have, let's hear the models. Let's hear, uh, did you like them? Did you have good experiences, bad experiences? Let me know in those comments down below. And of course, if you like this video, give it a like, share, subscribe, and comment. All those things are very helpful to the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.